Okay, in this problem, you were asked to find the limit as x goes to infinity of the square root of 1 plus x squared divided by x. Now, the trick here is to divide both the top and the bottom by x, or multiply by 1 over x, times 1 over x. Now, on the bottom, x times 1 over x is, of course, just 1. But on the top, you have something interesting. You have the square root of 1 plus x squared times 1 over x. We'd like to be able to combine this into the square root. And here's where we take advantage of the following fact. x is equal to the square root of x squared, right? First you square, then you take the square root. But here's an important point that's going to come up later. This only is true if x is positive. So this equation is true, right? So 5 is equal to the square root of 5 squared, which is 25, for example, right? 5 is the square root of 5 squared without a problem. But notice that over here, if x is negative, if x is negative, negative 5 is not the square root of negative 5 squared, right? Because that's going to be the square root of positive 25, which is going to be 5 since you're taking the positive square root. So this is not true. Here, if x is negative, it's equal to negative the square root of itself squared. So this is the substitution we can make in the first part of the problem. This is the, second, the substitution we have to make in the second part. There's a minus sign. That's an important difference. But moving back to the first part of the problem, we can replace this x with square root of x squared. Okay, so now you can, of course, combine this into the square root, and it's the square root of, we're dividing both of these things by x squared, so it's 1 over x squared plus x squared over x squared is just 1, divided by 1. Now, if you take the limit as x goes to infinity, of course, 1 over x squared is going to go to 0, so this thing is going to go to the square root of 0 plus 1, divided by 1, which is, of course, just the square root of 1 over 1, which is just 1. So that's the answer to this first limit. Now, as for this second limit, we're going to do entirely the same thing. We're going to divide by uh, x on both the numerator and the denominator, except here, at this stage, we're going to do something different. We're going to use the negative square root of x squared instead of the positive square root, because x is negative if we're approaching negative infinity. Here, we were approaching positive infinity, so we were looking at positive values of x. This was the legitimate substitution. For negative values, we'll make that substitution. So really, this quantity becomes the square root of 1 plus x squared times 1 over negative square root of x squared over, well, nothing happens differently on the, in the denominator, so that's still just going to be 1. So here you'll notice everything pretty much works out the in exa entirely the same way, except we pick up a minus sign that we can just move to the very front. So this is going to be negative the square root of 1 over x squared plus 1 over 1, which approaches negative square root of 0 plus 1 over 1 for entirely the same reason as x goes off to negative infinity, x squared goes off to positive infinity, 1 over it goes to 0, nothing changed there, and this is 1 over 1, but now we have a minus sign out front, so that's negative 1. So as we go off to positive infinity, it's going to be 1, as we go up to negative infinity, it's going to approach negative 1. Now we're given a function, f of x equal to x times 1 plus 1 over x squared. You'll notice this isn't defined at 0. You can't plug in 0 because you can't divide by 0, right? But still, if you consider a function, for example, like x squared minus 4 over x minus 2, remember, you'd want to write this as x plus 2 times x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. And the x minus 2s would cancel. So this is like x plus 2, the graph of which is a line. Except it's not quite, because if you actually look at the literal definition of this function, you plug in a 2, it's not defined. You'd get 0 over 0. So this function actually isn't defined at, at x equals 2. So recall that the graph of such a thing looks just like the graph of x plus 2, except there's a hole right above where x would equal 2. That's the x-axis. Right, so if there's so there's a it's like a graph with a hole. 
But the point is that you could take this function and you could redefine it at one value. Namely, you could just define it to equal 4 at 2 and you can fill in this hole. Right? What's, what's significant here is that the limit of this guy as x approaches 2 exists. The left and the right hand limits both look like they're going to go to 4. So the, the overall limit exists, which means it wants to equal 4 when you plug in 2. But it doesn't quite manage because you're not allowed to plug in 2. But just by redefining the function at that one point, making it defined at that one point, you could easily fill in the hole. And that's what this problem is really asking you to do. This function over here, f of x, isn't defined at 0. But if it's just like a hole at 0, like this, with the two left and right, with the left and right hand limits agreeing, then you could redefine it at 0 to fill in the hole. In a, you know, kind of give it a piecewise definition. It would equal this everywhere out, away from 0, but then at x equals 0, you'd give it whatever value you need to give it to make the whole thing continuous. So you turn it into a kind of piecewise definition. But this only makes sense, this only works if the limit as x approaches 0 exists. So that's the question. Does the limit as x goes to 0 of this f of x exist? Well, you would take the left and right hand limits and you'd want to see that they're equal to one another. So what is what are these two things? We're interested in the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of x times the square root of 1 plus 1 over x squared. So here's where you make a, a powerful substitution. You, you call u 1 over x. Because then what will happen is that x out here in front is just 1 over u, right? So that x becomes 1 over u. And this square root of 1 plus 1 over x squared is really just the square root of 1 plus u squared. So this is equal to the square root of 1 plus u squared over u. And that looks exactly like the kind of thing we were dealing with up here, except the x has turned into a u. So that's why these problems are related to one another. OK, but now here we're interested in the limit as x approaches 0 coming from the right. Well, I want to write that as the limit as u approaches something. But what do I put here? You see, you don't just, you don't just put 0 from the right. You have to ask yourself, as x approaches, as x approaches 0 from the right, what is u approaching? So this is a common mistake. If you're going to solve a limit by making a substitution, then you have to worry about uh, how these, uh, this part of the limit, the thing underneath the, uh, the limb, how it changes. So as x approaches 0 from the right, what is u approaching? Well, u is just 1 over x. And we know what the graph of that looks like. It looks something like this. We have these vertical asymptote here at 0. So as x approaches 0, so u is 1 over x, remember. As x approaches 0 coming in from the right, u is shooting off to positive infinity. So here, we're really interested in the limit as u goes to infinity of the square root of 1 plus u squared over u. And we just figured that out in part a of the problem. That turned out to be 1, remember. That's equal to 1. So that's the right-hand limit. But now what about the left-hand limit? Because remember, we want these two things to agree. So we are interested in the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of x times the square root of 1 plus 1 over x squared. That's my f of x. What is this equal to? I hope it's equal to 1 as well, because then I can just define my function to equal 1 at 0, and it becomes continuous. It fills in the hole. Only the problem is, by entirely the same substitution, you would have the limit as u approaches something, we'll discuss what in a moment, of the square root of 1 plus u squared over u. Same algebra leads to the same inter or the same function here in terms of u. But now, we're, as x approaches 0 from the left, remember, this is the graph of u as a function of x. As we approach 0 from the left now, u is shooting down to negative infinity, not positive infinity. So we're interested in the limit as u approaches negative infinity of this quantity, which, again, is what we figured out over here in part a of the problem. And we realized, hey, wait a minute, that's negative 1. That's not equal to 1. So that was equal to negative 1. So that means that uh, the limit as x approaches 0 coming from the right ends up being equal to 1. But the limit as x approaches 0 from the left is equal to negative 1. So I don't know what's going on, and I don't 
there's no need to figure out what's going on for large values of x. The point is we're approaching 1 from the right and we're approaching negative 1 from the left. This is a jump discontinuity, not a removable discontinuity. I can define f of 0 to be this point, and that would fill in half of it, but then I'd still have a discontinuity. Or if I define it to be that, then I'd still have a discontinuity. So, so the answer is there's no way of defining it because the left and right hand limits disagree.